Set your mind on the kingdom. If most of us were asked why we thought we were not fulfilled, why we were not simply happy, we would probably not answer using terms like essential harmony, awareness, consciousness, or spirit. We would be much more likely to point to particular features of our life, work, relationships, health, and so on, and to attribute our unhappiness or anxiety to one or all of these. Many people, indeed, would not even see all these different aspects of their life as having any common point of contact. To so many of us today, the activities of our day are like parallel lines, and many actively resent one area impinging on another. The result of this is that modern life so often lacks a center, a point of convergence, a source of unity. Consequently, men and women lose the sense of their own creative center, and as a result, they have no contact with their real selves. The understanding of prayer that makes it merely a matter of telling God what we want or need and reminding him of our sins of omission only compounds our alienation from reality. For this was the liberating message Jesus came to bring. I bid you put away anxious thoughts about food and drink to keep you alive and clothes to cover your body. Surely life is more than food, the body more than clothes, he tells us. And what he is advocating is not an irresponsible or fanatical indifference to the external aspects of our life, but he is urging us to develop a spirit of trust, of absolute trust, in the fatherhood of the God who not only created us, but sustains us in being from moment to moment. Do not be anxious about tomorrow. Tomorrow will look after itself, he taught. Realize yourself, that is, in the present moment, because your happiness and fulfillment are here and now. To trust another is to renounce self and place your center of gravity in the other. This is liberty and this is love. All these things, said Jesus, of the material concerns of life, are for the heathen to run after, not for you, because your heavenly Father knows that you have need of all of them. The trust which he calls on his followers to have in the fatherhood of his Father is not the immature, childish presumption of getting what you want simply because you want it. To trust in God means to have turned ourselves fully towards another. And if we've done that, we have transcended both ourselves and our wanting. In this experience of transcendence itself, we receive more than we could ever have asked for, or ever have dared even to want. Set your mind on God's kingdom before everything else, and all the rest will come to you as well. The proper ordering of our external activities can only be achieved once we have re-established conscious contact with the center of all these activities and concerns. This center is the aim of our meditation. It is the center of our own being. In St. Teresa's words, God is the center of the soul. When our access to this center is opened up, the kingdom of God is established in our hearts. That kingdom is nothing less than the present power and all-pervasive life of God himself, permeating all creation. And so, in the words of John Cassian, he who is the author of eternity would have men ask of him nothing that is uncertain, petty, or temporal. Not because he does not want us to enjoy the good things of life, but because we can only fully enjoy them when we have received his gift of himself, of himself from whom all good things come, who is goodness itself. The proof of his generosity is also what St. Paul calls the ground of our hope.
It is the love of God flooding our inmost hearts through the Holy Spirit he has given us. This is not an experience reserved for the select few. It is a gift to you and me and all men and women. To receive it, we must return to the center of our being, where it enters us, the source of our being, the source of the infusion of God's love through the Spirit of Jesus.